hello everyone uh, in this uh, in this video I, I want to quickly go over uh, the different forecasting model I discussed in my lecture so there are four model I discussed uh, as you see in this uh, sheet uh, two are related to stationary time series moving averages and exponential smoothing model and the non stationaries are linear model and the quadratic models so uh, I have have uh, available these sheets to you on your on the blackboard, and I'm going to explain how I did this uh, these 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 models. And uh, if you have Excel, in Excel has a very good tool, which is if you click on the data, it's called data analysis tool. It's a very good tool. It practically has all types of uh, data analysis. Uh, uh, tool here is you can see that for example that it has uh, different statistics for example and, and of course in this uh, particular one we are interested in regression so I'm going to show you how I use regression to run a bunch of these models here uh, in case if you don't see this uh, data analysis uh, tool uh, what you would see here on the options of your Excel if you have the Excel software uh, purchased uh, then you should have this option available in add-in if you click on the add-in you will see uh, along with solver which I think is also a very good tool um, and this tool is used in linear programming uh, and if you click on data analysis for example and you say go or solver in you can go then you can able to uh, access these two tools so they are these are add-in features which comes with your Microsoft Office uh, Excel okay so I want to show you quickly the linear so as you can see this particular data set we have uh, these years so what I did was I converted years into a time period uh, as explained in my lecture uh, so obviously it will be very helpful that you review my lecture uh, they are already recorded for you so you can watch the recorded lecture so what I did was I converted here into time period T and these are the sales okay and have a look at this uh, this spreadsheet uh, uh, it, I, I took time to explain uh, things here in this sheet but what I want to do right now here for you is to show you uh, how can I use a simple linear regression uh, using this data to predict the sales by time and you can see here in this particular scatter plot the time period on x-axis and the sales on a y-axis all right so what you do in this case is because this is a really simple linear regression so if you go on data analysis tool you select the regression regression tool here say okay <clears throat> and then you select your y input the variable you're forecasting and x is your time period t okay and because as you notice that I also highlighted the labels which in indicate time period and sales so make sure you check into the labels if your data data has labels okay and uh, and also one uh, one cool thing about Excel is it also give you a bunch of things for example it will give you the residuals uh, you would need residuals for example to compute the mean square errors actually it also give you residual plots also which is also pretty cool as well uh, of course you can also uh, get the nor normal probability plot but at this point uh, I'm not interested in I'm interested in residual plot uh, uh, residual plots we check for the multicollinearity purposes uh, whether we have autocorrelation or not and uh, residuals we check for to compute the a mean square errors e values okay and uh, and uh, and also it also has uh, this uh, line fit plot the one I showing you right now here so we can also check for this plot also so you can have a nice plot it already plotted plotted out uh, plotted for you so yeah you can check off for this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, different plots here okay and it asks you option output where do you want uh, do you want in a new workbook it will show the new workbook do you want to show up in a new worksheet uh, for example so what I will do is I will just do because I already have done this thing so I'm just going to show into a a new uh, worksheet so that anything 
all the analysis will show up in a separate sheet so you're going to simply say okay and look at that beautiful it's the all all things showed up here you can see your residual plot here okay and you can see your uh, time series plot here for example and um, yeah if you double click this uh, chart it will uh, it will show you uh, your different features of the of the um, of the plot for example and uh, and I'm just going to sh show you that for example uh, how to uh, if you just want to use the sales for example just say uh, um, just say uh, sales by time period this is what look like nicely here okay so the reason I'm showing you that so we can uh, see exactly what I've done in my sheet uh, okay so you can see this nice plot here this is a residual plot you can uh, stretch for example and as you can see this in this uh, output so this is our intercept okay this is the slope showing up and this is my uh, residuals you can see that these are the residu residuals showing up so you can see that uh, I have uh, conducted a, a simple time series analysis here and if you look at my this linear this is exactly the same what I observed, what I've done here as well so you can see there's exactly the same type of output here also you can see the same output I have done here as well so what I uh, what what you noticed here is this once I got this uh, residual plot you can use this residual plot exactly same residual, residual output I got here you can see this residual output same residual output so what I have done is this is I took the residual output and I calculated my residuals errors here it is the residual errors okay and um, and you can see the residual errors here as well so this is the residual errors here as well okay so the what I did at, at 8 because if I want to compute my for my for example if I want to comp compute my mean square errors for example so I use this uh, this uh, different numbers so you can look at how I calculate these numbers like e square obviously e square is the square of the residuals and then this is the e t minus e t minus 1 for example so you can see that what I have done so have a look at this one and uh, this is how you really do your uh, linear model okay and uh, and uh, now I want to show you the nonlinear model okay the nonlinear model so uh, if you remember what I talk about the nonlinear model is basically the quadratic model and what I've done is this so uh, so let's move here uh, in this side so okay so we already have this time period uh, and again I'm using a exact same example I used uh, in the in my lecture so this is my time period this is the years this is the seasons I converted the seasons into a time period T as you can see this time period T and then we have this uh, time period T right you see this time period 1 to 20 and then uh, as the nature of quadratic model so I did that I took this I square the value all right so basically I square this value 1 square is 1 2 square is 4 3 square is 9 4 square is 16 and these are repair cost so we're going to build a quadratic model and and I'm explaining in my lecture because if you use a simple linear model as you can see this this line it's not a, a good fit because we are making a lot of errors in prediction so the quadratic model makes more sense so so in this case what do you what are you going to do in this case is you uh, treat this basically is a, a as as a uh, multiple linear regression model the way you look at it but it's a quadratic as you can see this thing that this nice picture will show up in a second so what I'm going to do is this, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and go to my data, data analysis, and again select my regression, all right? And in my regression, in this particular regression, this is very important. So of course you will uh, select your uh, Y input, which is my repair cost in this example. Okay, select my repair cost. And my input, uh, and my Y input, this is very important that when I select my X inputs, Make sure I select simultaneously both of them okay so I did that I checked my labels okay I did everything else I did earlier same thing new worksheet showing the new worksheet and it's okay and here it is here is this uh, a beautiful plot shows up you can see that everything looks so nice here in this uh, so I have this residual plot showing up okay and uh, so of course you can see the residual plot does show that there is a uh, the relationships curve that's why you're using a using a, um, a non-linear line okay and 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 here is the result of my uh, 
quadratic model. So you say this is my intercept, this is my t, and this is my t square slopes. Okay, and again, this is my residual plots. You see this one here. And if you look at this number, uh, you will see the same number which I produce here as well. Okay, so I just wanted to show you here. You can see the exactly same number. You see this one here also. Okay, see the same number. This is the same number you see here also. Okay, so this is what I did. Okay, and this is, uh, of course, this is my time period. This is my repair cost, right? And you can see that this is a quadratic, uh, quadratic model. Okay. Yeah, so this is how you uh, do your uh, nonlinear model. And again, uh, have a look at the rest stuff. Uh, I already received uh, the residuals in the residual plot. So using my residuals, I can compute my uh, mean square errors. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so follow this one, uh, this one along, okay, and uh, and this is how you do your uh, nonlinear model. And I want to now I'm to move to the moving averages. So moving averages are the stationary uh, stationary data forecasting. And as I was explaining, moving averages basically is the uh, is the averages of the of the time period you're interested in. So for the purpose of uh, illustration, I did the two quarter moving average and four quarter moving average and you can see that um, for example if I'm using two quarter moving average so make sure I take the average of the first two numbers then then the next two numbers and the next two numbers as you can see that right so it's and so on and of course you can see that the first two numbers are blank because I don't have a two uh, two time time periods to take average that's why the first two periods are blank and for the four moving call, uh, moving uh, moving averages, you notice that I'm taking the average of, averages of the first four numbers. That's why you see that, and uh, and and that's why you really see that these two are uh, blank. These four are blank because there is no uh, four time periods prior to that. All right, and 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 so on and so forth. That's why I did for the remaining one. For example, for the last one is for example take the last remaining last four one for the moving averages. And if I'm comparing this to model, two quarter moving average, four quarter moving average, um, you notice that I'm using for both of them, as I also explained the same thing also in my uh, lecture also, so I'm using this seven time periods, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm, when I'm comparing the mean square errors, right? So you see that I'm using this seven time period. You see the seven time periods I'm using, five to 11? Same thing I'm using uh, five to 11, right? Just so that I can able to compare the performance of the two moving averages. If if I'm comparing the two uh, two quarter moving averages, and again, when I'm doing the scatter plot, this is simply scatter plot as you see this one, uh, and of course the, the 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 first yellow line is the actual sale as says in in the uh, in the legend, and the red one is a four quarter moving uh, moving uh, moving average uh, forecast. And you notice that the first two are blank. That's why the first two are blank here. The first two periods has no data. I start from number three. And similarly, if you notice that for the green one, four, four, four quarter moving average, it doesn't have the first, first four, four quarter data because it doesn't, forecast doesn't begin until quarter five. That's why it's important that you pay attention to this uh, why, why, why green line, which is a four quarter moving average, begins from quarter five because um, we don't have forecast data. All right. So that's uh, that is your uh, uh, moving average uh, average model, and uh, and of course because I'm going uh, this uh, these models with you quickly, but what I would suggest uh, you will watch one model, uh, let's say linear, um, do what I explained and take time, pause it and explain and understand, and then of course move to a nonlinear model and and, uh, and try to understand, pause it and then move to moving averages. In other words, do not watch all this four model quickly because it might not be very uh, useful. So watch one model at a time, follow along in the notes, in the in my recorded lecture notes. And then if you follow this uh, this uh, this tutorial that you're able to get most out of it. Because if you try to watch all in the same go, uh, it's not you don't understand, you probably will understand, no doubt about it. But it will be more beneficial if you watch one model at a time and try to do your work and, and then it will be more beneficial. The finally, I want to show the exponential smoothing, smoothing model here. <clears throat> so, and so the idea behind the exponential smoothing model is, as you see in this, uh, in the, in the, in the form, in the formula we calculated is, so it's based upon the weight. So in this example, the weight I'm giving point to, and that's what I explained in my lecture also, for example. 
and uh, and of course as you can see that uh, this is the uh, previous uh, c3 is the previous uh, previous forecast and b3 you can see the b3 is the previous actual sale and this forecast sale so this is a really the formula i'm really applying them here in my calculation so there is no any uh, special thing i'm doing i'm just simply put my uh, the formula for the exponential smoothing prediction and this is the this is the weight i'm applying them so i just refer to the weight right and and based upon my point two and of course as you can see that is i draw this um, this actual sale and and the forecast sale and I, as i explained also in my lecture that the the first uh, first prediction will be same as the actual sale because we don't have all the data that's why you use uh, 23 as in, as in as in the first quarter as a prediction value what I want to show you right now, which is pretty cool, is uh, this. Right now, uh, one of the things we know that is to make our model more, uh, uh, more, uh, much better is if the model has a lower mean square error. Well, so right now at point two, the mean square error is 107, and this is a very interesting feature which you can use solver for that one, right? So, uh, so I want to show you this this special feature of solver. So, and. Uh, and, and if you're familiar with the linear programming aspect, which I think you probably have, because this is a course everybody take at UFB School of Business. Uh, if you're not, um, at least I'm showing you right now. So you can see that is uh, I, uh, my set objective is that, that I want to minimize my mean square error. So you can see that I'm using, so I'm using this, this number, mean square error, minimize this number, right? And what I'm really changing is I'm changing, I'm changing is my, this uh, alpha right and my constant is that my alpha need to be bet within between zero and one so it is equal to or or less than one or equal to or less or, or more than zero so you can see that so these are my constraints I set them up right and that's what it is I just wanted to watch what happened is once you have this uh, this pretty cool feature if you solve it watch this what happened right solve it and look at this one say okay Look at this one, right? My my, my point two had changed to point four or seven. So you think that to have an optimal model, you should use alpha point four as opposed to point two. And my mean square error has come down significantly now is eighty nine. So so this is a cool feature. If you like to use it, you can use it. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, if you don't want to use it, you can leave it uh, point two as it is, right? Uh, let me show you one more time just to uh, of course you can watch this again and again and uh, just to show what i did was so i set my uh, uh, my my objective the mean square error that i want to minimize minimize my mean square error so as a part of linear programming you said minimizing what i'm really changing is really i'm changing my uh, this alpha value right and uh, and i'm just putting this constraint so okay of course i can i can um, um, delete this constraint so i can show you how i set this constraint up so i can delete this constraint and you say add constraint so you, you say you know what i want to use uh, this country constraint so it has to be less than equal to one okay and and then you say i want to use this constraint it has to be greater than or equal to zero okay and you say okay so so I so here it is okay so I add those two constraints and I'm going to say solve so you back to again same thing all right so report it is answer sensitive limit so keep the solver solution up so I say okay so keep the solution up so yeah and 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 this picture I this is scatter plot really and I just added the I said use a scatter plot so this is based on a scatter plot. So this is this is all it is. So it's not very difficult. Uh, have a look at it and um, and 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 try to practice.